Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about Hashimoto's, okay? Uh, this is an autoimmune condition, hypothyroid condition. There's another autoimmune um, related to the thyroid called Graves, and that would be a hyper thyroid. So that speeds things up too fast. Hypo is too slow. So I'm going to kind of walk you through um, some pieces of this puzzle. An autoimmune condition is where your immune system, your own body's immune system, is generating cells that are attacking itself called antibodies, anti against the body, okay? And it's kind of weird that it'll do that, but it does that in pretty much any tissue in the body. You can have an autoimmune to any tissue, the nervous system, the connective tissue, uh, even synovial fluid in the joints. Um, but as far as the thyroid goes, there's uh, the most common um, antibody that, that's involved in Hashimoto's is something called anti-TPO antibodies. What does that mean? Basically, it's anti-thyroid peroxidase. Now, what is a peroxidase? That's just an enzyme. So thyroid peroxidase, which is TPO, uh, is an enzyme that works with hydrogen peroxide to basically make thyroid hormones. So it's some chemical in the thyroid that's involved in making the thyroid hormone. It's basically you take the dietary iodine and then it converts it to the iodine that's necessary to make the thyroid hormone because you have like T3 and T4. The, the four and the three uh, represent the number of iodine molecules in that protein, in that uh, hormone. So to do that, you need this chemical and this chemical together. Now, they really don't know exactly what causes this problem, but we know it's a problem within the immune system. We know that somehow it could be involved in uh, your body's dropping the defense of the immune system because Many of these conditions occur right after a stress event. So you have this adrenal connection, which also controls the immune system. And then you have uh, the immune adrenal connection. So that could be a link. But when you have an autoimmune condition, we do have excess hydrogen peroxide floating around. And if you, you, you may have some of this in your cupboard, like this little, this bottle of hydrogen peroxide that you use if you cut yourself to sterilize it, okay, to disinfect, because it's a very powerful oxidant. So it kind of bubbles and cleans bacteria, kills bacteria. So hydrogen peroxide, if it's in the, the body at higher levels, it can actually create um, oxidative stress or damage. So one thing we want to do is we want to kind of remove the excess amount of this right here. And that's what I want to talk about because we want to increase our immune defenses. We want to increase the antioxidant network that's going to actually fight and neutralize the oxidant. So we start out with uh, selenium. Selenium is a very powerful antioxidant. It's a trace mineral that is very helpful in making thyroid hormones and also helping the conversion from the inactive to the active form. Zinc is another powerful antioxidant. And there's one more that has a very long name, S-acetyl-L-glutathione. Very important antioxidant that will help clear out the excess amount of hydrogen peroxide. So if I personally had Hashimoto's, these are some of the th remedies that I would take to support uh, that condition. So we can actually remove some of the excess hydrogen peroxide because that can create more damage. And I would focus also on just getting my body healthier and healthier and definitely include intermittent fasting because anytime you do uh, prolonged intermittent fasting, let's say you do it once a month or once every other month, you are going to drop inflammation. You are going to help the immune system. You are going to enhance the immune function. All right, thanks for watching. Hey, if you're liking this content, please subscribe now and I will actually keep you updated on future videos.